Welcome JDS students, faculty, and staff, and all that are watching to week two of our chapel service. I have been so blessed by our theme this month, the road to Emmaus, or as I like to say, the road to Revelation. This famous path of leading from Jerusalem to Emmaus, where we find the disciples learning more about Christ, is what we are diving into this month. And as we enter into worship, let's take that same attitude into this sacred moment of praise where not only are we singing words and singing lyrics, but we're asking God to reveal himself through the songs that we sing, reveal himself in our sacred moments of worship. So listen, put out all distractions. Come on, let's focus in and let's lift up the name of Jesus. Welcome. Let us pray. Wonderful Father, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Truly, the entrance of your word gives life. Of a surety, heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall stand forever. You, O Lord, who holds your word above your name, open our understanding that we may comprehend the scriptures. Father, our minds are often clouded by the darkness of this world. We need the light of your word to shine on our paths as we intentionally grasp the purpose you have for us through your word. This world, Father, needs a true understanding of the cross and the finished work of Calvary. Open our understanding that we may clearly articulate what Jesus did for us all. And according to 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. But you, God, have revealed secrets unto us by your Spirit. Thank you for showing up as only you can and causing the scripture to be fulfilled before our eyes. Father, let there be a communication of deep things as you reveal yourself and grant us understanding in Jesus' name. We pray for understanding so that we may walk in your ways rather than our own ways and think your thoughts rather than our own thoughts. Our way of thinking is limited, but yours is infinite. We thank you in advance for giving us understanding so that we can be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, family. Let us, during this time of reflection, bring our hearts and our minds towards becoming one with God, reconciled with Him, reconciled towards His promises, just as Christ was reconciled with His disciples those 40 days after His resurrection in which He is walking on the road to Emmaus. And as they were having conversations about Him, he appears in the midst and continues the journey with him. Let us bring our hearts and our minds that we can be reconciled to in our conversations about him so that he can be with us still on this journey, on this road of life. Father, I pray that my brother and my sister, all of us, would be reconciled with you and we ask for forgiveness for anything that we have said and or done that interrupts the flow of conversation that brings you into our midst. It is with hearts and minds of expectation that we now are reconciled with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pull your love out on him. I love you, Lord. 
For your mercy never fails me All my deeds have been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I believe you've tasted and seen his goodness Anybody in here that have experienced the goodness of God, come on, offer up a praise to him right now. It may be the lifting of your hands. It may be the clapping of your hands. But somebody offer up to him what he deserves and that's the glory. Ooh, I love you, Lord. Everybody sing for your mercy. All my, days All my days have been held in your, held in your hands. Come on, sing to your Savior. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. Let's move. I love your voice. I love, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. Darkest nights, you were close like no one. I've known you as a father. I know you as a friend. For I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, everybody sing all my life. Sing.
now let us bring our hearts and our minds towards the journey, towards Pentecost. Make sure that on this journey that you are not carrying anything that could hinder you from receiving everything from God. Bring our hearts and our minds to the place of peace while we journey, even now. Pray with me. Dear Lord, we confess that we need your Holy Spirit to help our understanding as we seek to know you more through your word. As we study to show ourselves approved, may you enlighten the eyes of our understanding and allow the power of your word to cut between our soul and spirit and between the joint and marrow of our hearts and minds to expose our innermost thoughts and desires. For your word is alive and powerful, and you've given your word to us to lead us and guide us along the pathways of our lives. So help us to open up ourselves to you and to your spirit so that you can do in us only what your word can do. Give us understanding so that we may learn your commandments, know you more, and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The journey to Emmaus. The risen Lord opened their understanding to comprehend the scriptures. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 47. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of our sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Hi students. My name is Dr. Oscar Williams, and I'm a proud JDS Advisory Board member and member of the Potter's House. And it is my most humbling task to give the homily for this week. I'd like to thank Dr. Felicia Ford and Bishop T.D. Jakes and all of the JDS staff who help us to bring the word to life in so many different ways to you each week through our chapel services and even through classes. And to you, the students, I pray right now that God allow the eyes of our understanding to be open, that he touch our hearts and that we hear something in this word that will be life changing. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you in this moment. Be glorified through the words that we read and understand in Jesus name. Amen. So we've been talking about the road to Emmaus and you heard last week about part of that journey part of that backdrop. And so my assignment is to focus specifically on Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 47. I'm reading from the New English translation and it says, then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. Check that verse out. We want to come back to that. Verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it stands written that the Christ would suffer and would rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. I want to go back again to verse 45, which is where we'll kind of really focus on and hang our hat. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. So maybe you've just joined us this week or or you've been following along. So here's the, here's the backdrop. Here's the picture. This is the first day of the week and the women with earnestness to have come to the tomb with their spices to anoint the body of Jesus, to continue what they started. And to their surprise, dismay, um, astonishment, 
the tomb is empty. They see these angels or visions of angels. It says, don't you remember what he told you in Galilee that he would rise? Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Now, now a lot, a lot of times we read this story um, with the understanding of the middle, the beginning, the middle, and the end. But I want you to take a moment to put yourself contextually in the mindset of these believers. Their Lord, their Savior was just crucified. And coming to memorialize him, they find that his body is no longer there. And though they've never really seen anybody raise themselves from the dead, they want to believe it's true, but they, they still don't know. So these women, they rush back to the other disciples and they tell them, they say, listen, we went to see the body. We went to anoint him and he is not there. Well, well, the disciples are, are rambling. And, and so Peter gets up and runs with all his might to the tomb to see the linen cloth of the Savior folded so neatly. And he runs back and all the disciples are in this disarray. Could it be? Is this true? Did he do what he said he would do? I can imagine that there was this angst of, I mean, is, is Jesus, is this really the manifestation of the Messiah that we know? And then there were the other ones who still weren't that convinced, who thought, yes, I mean, it could be, it could be not. Somebody could have stolen the body. And I would imagine that was the mindset of these two guys, one unnamed and one named Cleophas, who were walking this seven mile journey to Emmaus. And this is where we find our story, the context of where we are. They're in the middle of conversation. And then they are approached by an inquisitive stranger who is wondering, what are you talking about? What is what what's happening? What, what's all the fuss about? And they look at him with with like this probably um, question mark back saying, where have you been? Are you a stranger? Are you just getting here? You haven't heard what's been going on in Jerusalem? The prophet, the one that we've been following, the, the one that we have committed our lives to, Jesus, he was crucified and died. And here's the thing that we learned in previous weeks. We learned that part of their disappointment was not so much that he was crucified but that their expectation of who Jesus was, was crucified with him and buried with him. Here they're thinking, this is the Messiah that's going to vindicate all of Israel. And yet, again, he's going just like the other ones that came before. And this inquisitive stranger begins to talk to them and reveal to them and open up to them the scripture, going back to the words of Moses and the Torah and walking them through the Psalms and walking them through the prophecies that foretold that this Christ must suffer, must go through these things for the remission of sins and for the Israels and the Gentiles and all who believe on him to be saved. And he does something amazing. As they enter into Emmaus, he has this moment with them where they invite him to stay with them. And as he's in there, Jesus, this person who they have not recognized, begins a ritual that he has done a few other times before. It is the breaking of the bread. And all of a sudden, the scripture says, their eyes were open. He was revealed to them, not through the words that he said, but through his action. And then he's gone. And there, my their, their hearts are burning. Their minds are, are, are so invigorated. And they're saying to each other, did not our heart burn within us when we listened to his words, when we saw? And the scripture says immediately they get up. They don't even stay in Emmaus. They get up and they go back to the disciples and say, listen, it is true. We saw him. Simon saw him. We saw him. And the disciples are still trying to wrap their minds around the fact that could this be true? Could he have risen from the dead? Could he have done what he said he was going to do? And then all of a sudden, this inquisitive stranger 
one who they should have been so accustomed to, which is so interesting to me. To have walked with Jesus for three years, to have been around him, to have been so intimately connected to him. And here for the second time, he shows up amongst them and they don't recognize him. It makes me think about our lives as believers, that how often are we involved in church work? How often do we show up in the house of God? Do we show up for Bible study? Do we show up for those that are pastors to preach? Do we show up in, in Christian work and still don't recognize Jesus in the forms that he takes when he manifested himself or manifest himself here before our eyes? In my own life, it calls me to stop and just to take inventory that am I so involved in just the physical relationship of, of the savior, of, of the, of the work of, of doing that I have never stopped to say, father, reveal yourself to me in a way that I can tangibly see you. And it is a challenging thing because one of the things that we do so well sometimes is work in the church. One of the things that we master is we master the art of godly work because sometimes that substitutes the real work of relationship. And when I look at this story, what I find is those that knew Jesus better than anyone still being blinded by who he really was. That here he shows up in the midst of them and he says to him, he says to them these words, peace be unto you. And he's telling them, this is I, and, and they're still in, in a place of bewilderment. And he's saying, look, look at my hands, look at my side, come touch me, come see that I am the one that walked amongst you. I am the one who, who said in three days, I will resurrect this body. I am here, here I am, this, this is me in the flesh. And he asked, give me something to eat. And part of that is because he knew that that in order for them to really believe that this was really the manifested Jesus, ghosts can't eat food. So give me some fish. And so in the midst of this, Jesus begins to teach them in the scripture. He begins to take them back and, and take them through the prophecies, through the law of Moses, through the Psalms, through the prophets that foretold Isaiah, all of these things that must happen. And in that verse 45, it says, and he opened their eyes. I think this week I've been praying, God, open my eyes so that I can see what I cannot see. So that I can know what I do not know, so that I can understand what I do not understand. We live in a world that today there's so much that comes to our attention through social media, through TV, through news. So much comes to inundate our understanding. And if we're not careful, we will be blinded by all that we see and miss the real revelation or the real truth. So if I don't, if, if you have to take anything from this omelet, I want you to take the fact that there is still yet a deeper place, a deeper level for revelation of who Christ is in all our lives. But sometimes it just doesn't come through the normal, traditional work, the normal, traditional flow, the normal, traditional activity of what we do of studying, of, of preaching, of going to church. Sometimes we have to stop and say, Father, open my eyes. Open the eyes of my understanding. Let me see you in a way that I have not been able to see you before. It's only in that moment that we can then truly embrace who Christ is for us in that moment. And I believe that God's revealing of himself is different depending on who you are and where you are in your life. I believe that he is so, so in tune with who you are, who we are, that he can reveal himself to you in such a tangible way that you will leave with the same testimony as the disciples. 
did not my heart burn within me. That no matter who comes or who goes, your revelation of Christ will be cemented in your heart. And I believe he did it because he knew what they would be facing. I believe that Jesus understood that in order for them to stand fast on their faith, he had to do more than just show up in the midst of them. He had to reveal himself to them in a way that was undeniable. And I believe that's what God is going to do for us in this dispensation. Because there are some that we see leaving the faith, doubting if this is really real. And the scripture has already told it that there will be a great falling away. But I believe you, my brother and my sister that are watching, are part of that remnant that will say, God, I want to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work and the word of the Lord. So reveal yourself to me and he will do it. In the midst of everything, in the midst of chaos, Jesus the Christ will show you himself. And when he does, oh, what a day that will be. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that in the midst of a chaotic and crazy world, you are still showing up in the midst of your people. And you're not just showing up, Father God, to remind us or to bless us or to heal us or to deliver us. You're showing up to reveal yourself to us. Thank you for caring so much about us that you will not leave us without a witness and you will not leave us abandoned. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of who you are that doesn't just come by the scripture, but comes by the relationship that we establish with you. And I pray for everyone watching right now, Father, that they have that Emmaus moment with you, that they see you break the bread and that their eyes are open and that their understanding is enlightened and that their hearts burn for the manifestation of your presence that happened in their very being. In Jesus' name, amen. God, we praise you because we know that all things work together for the good of them that love you. And today, Father, we love you and we magnify you. As some of us lift our hands, as some of us begin to worship you, we thank you in advance for the wonderful works that you're going to do in the lives of our viewers today. My prayer today, God, is that you would continue to open our understanding. Help us to open our understanding of scripture, to open our understanding of the spirit, to open our understanding of you. Father, touch our minds, touch our intellect to raise up to the level that you called us to be. I thank you right now, God, for being a God who challenges our thinking and even causes us to be disruptive thinkers. I love you. I praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello again, family. Let's reflect on everything that was spoken to our hearts today. Let us reflect on this journey of life in which Jesus comes alongside to walk with us. And my prayer and blessing for all of us today is that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. Father, I thank you so much for being such a beneficent God, a God that looks at us and sees possibilities according to your word spoken in us. I pray now, Father, that you would confer a blessing upon your people, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened to know what is the hope of our call, what is the strength of our faith, what is the breadth, the length, and the depth of your love towards us. Open up our understanding, even now, that we may be more like you today and every day that you allow us to live. Thank you. And we receive this blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God.
Now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Peace to you.